Hello everyone and welcome to lesson 13.1b, 13.2a. I've entitled this video, Manifest Destiny and Florida. This video is going to cover pages 351 to 354. America seeks its manifest destiny. Since colonial times, many Americans had believed their nation's mission should be to serve as a model of freedom and democracy. In the 1800s, that vision changed. Many believed that the nation's mission was to spread freedom by settling the entire continent. In 1819, John Quincy Adams expressed what many Americans were thinking when he said expansion to the Pacific was as certain as the Mississippi River flowing to the sea. In the 1840s, New York newspaper editor John O'Sullivan expressed it in more specific words, the idea of a national mission. O'Sullivan declared it was America's manifest destiny to overspread and to possess the whole of the continent which Providence has given us. O'Sullivan meant that the United States was clearly destined, set apart for a special purpose by God, to expand its boundaries all the way to the Pacific Ocean. Question number one. What did many Americans believe America's mission was early on in our history? To be a model of freedom and democracy. Question two. What did many Americans begin to believe our mission was in the early 1800s? We began to see it as spreading freedom by settling the entire North American continent. And question three, what was manifest destiny? That was the belief um, expressed by John L. Sullivan, and many Americans believe this. It was the belief that we were a uh, destined country by God to control this continent, the North American continent, from Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean, that it was our destiny to do so. 54, 40, or fight. Many Americans wanted the United States to take over all of Oregon. In the 1844 presidential election, James K. Polk, the Democratic nominee, supported this desire. Democrats used the slogan, 54, 40, or fight, referring to the line of latitude they believed should be the nation's northern border in Oregon. Polk's Whig opponent, good old Henry Clay, did not take a strong position on the Oregon issue. Polk won the election because Whig support was not united behind Clay, and you know, it's Henry Clay, and he just can't seem to win those presidential elections. Question number four. What position did the 1844 Democratic candidate for President James K. Polk take towards Oregon? That we should have the entire part of Oregon. Question five. What slogan did the Democrats use in that election of 1844? 54, 40, or fight? Once again, it's got alliteration, a lot of Fs there. In this case, the 5440 meant the line of latitude that we thought, at least the Democrats thought at that time, should be the line of the border for Oregon. Question six, who won the presidential election of 1844 between Polk and Henry Clay? Well, is there any doubt? James K. Polk. And he becomes one of the greatest single-term presidents we've ever had, according to historians. Uh, usually when a president has success, they serve two terms. Well, he only served one term, but in his presidency, a lot of things happened positively for the United States, which is why he is ranked so high among presidential historians. A firm believer in manifest destiny, Polk was focused on acquiring Oregon. Britain would not accept a border at 5440 North Latitude. In 1846, the two countries compromised. They set the border at 49 degrees North Latitude. And you can see that line right here as we move across here. You can see that's where it is even today. There's that line. It was the same boundary the British had rejected 21 years before. Question number seven. How did the situation in Oregon get settled in 1846? A compromise between the United States and Britain, a peaceful compromise, where the line of Oregon was set right there for the Oregon country. And now we're gonna switch gears and move to section two in the book. And this is gonna be focusing on Florida. Florida. When Spain transferred Florida to the United States on July 17, 1821, Florida became an American territory. Under the terms of the Northwest Ordinance of 1787, Florida had an appointed territorial governor, a territorial legislature, and a non-voting delegate to the United States Congress. Tallahassee became the territorial capital in 1824. The capital was located about midway between St. Augustine and Pensacola, Florida's major cities at that time. Not counting Native Americans, 
fewer than 8,000 people lived in the territory, including enslaved people. Later, as news of the area's fertile land spread, thousands of new settlers streamed into Florida. Many planters from Virginia, Georgia, and the Carolinas had worn out their soil within, with years of heavy use. They left their old plantations for new land in Florida. Here, the planters established cotton and tobacco plantations, especially in northern Florida and the narrow strip in the northwest called the Panhandle, which you can see in red here. This is called the Panhandle of Florida. In addition, small farms and cattle ranches dotted the region of central Florida. The leading planters of northern Florida played a major role in the government and politics of the area. The territory grows. In 1837, the census for the territory of Florida reported that 48,000 people lived there. Enslaved people made up about one half of Florida's population. Officials organized a vote to determine if Floridians wanted to form a state. Only white men over 21 years of age voted in this election. These voters chose to seek statehood. Now, Floridians had to draw up a state constitution and submit it to the United States Congress. Question number eight. Why did many settlers from Virginia, Georgia, and the Carolinas decide to move to Florida? Well, news of its fertile land had spread, and many of those people had overused the soil of their plantations in their old states, so they felt like a new, fresh start would be the way to go. Question nine, what is the Florida Panhandle? We already talked about that in the video earlier, but here it is. It is that western part of Florida that looks like a panhandle, thus the name. Question 10, which people in Florida were allowed to vote to see if Florida should become a state? So once again, you can see how America has not always been fair to all of its citizens. In this time, only white men over the ages of 21 could vote. Florida voters chose 56 people to attend the Constitutional Convention in St. Joseph, a small port city on the Gulf Coast. The first constitution provided for a governor elected for four years and an elected General Assembly or legislature. The constitution also allowed slavery and called for a system of public schools. The delegates approved the constitution on January 11, 1839. Florida then sent the document to the United States Congress for final approval or ratification. Florida's desire to enter the Union as a slave state caused some difficulty. Congress had long struggled to maintain an equal balance between slave and free states. As a result, it would take six years for Congress to act on Florida's wish. Congress had to wait until another territory was ready to become a free state. Statehood for Florida Iowa finally emerged as a free state candidate. With the question of slavery removed, President John Tyler signed the Florida Statehood Bill. Florida became the 27th state in the United States on March 3, 1845. The next year, Iowa became a free state. Thus, the balance between the slave and free states in the nation remained the same in Congress. Question number 11. Why was Florida's entry into the United States challenging? Well, we had that constant struggle for keeping the free and slave states balance balanced, and so as Florida was clearly going to be a slave state, there needed to be a free state to enter in, and that's where Iowa stepped in, which is the last question 12. What state was added as a free state to keep the balance of Florida's entry as a balance between free and slave states? That state was our bordering state to the northwest, Iowa. Well, thank you so much for watching. Before we go, I have not one, but two for you today. Manifest Destiny, Americans in the 19th century. North America, it's our land. And then one for Florida. A raccoon riding an alligator, you know, because Florida. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, and have a great day.